I'm about to share with you a very powerful AI tool that feels like cheating. A tool that creates realistic images like this. Now you may see this and think it isn't practical and is taking the creativity out of architecture. But the goal of using AI in architecture is not to take creativity at all. In fact, it's actually there to boost the speed in which you generate and create ideas. Because of that, I have found Render extremely valuable when designing. So in this video, I'll be going over three practical ways to use Render in your design workflow with a bonus feature at the end that is changing the AI game. Starting by transforming your ideas into reality using the text to image tool. There are so many ways nowadays to come up with inspiration. You can go to Google, Pinterest, Art Daily, and the list goes on. But you end up scrolling 15 to 20 minutes before you find something that vaguely resembles what you're looking for. But there's a better solution, which is to use Render's text to image tool. And you don't even have to know exactly what you want. All you have to do is have at least a couple thoughts in your brain. And we'll start off simple. Let's say you're trying to come up with a concept for a new school. You kind of have the general idea of you want and roughly what the client is looking for. So in the prompt, I will type out two volumes with a central atrium double height space, just something extremely simple to start us off. And these are the results. And from there, the fun begins because you can start to see what concepts and ideas are working as well as the elements that are not, which lead to further refinement in the process. And as you continue to go back and forth, trying out new things, you'll start to understand and see this repetitive cycle of generating images where you continue to improve on each generation and each set that you produce, slowly gaining momentum as you go along the process. But the best way to get the most accurate results is to get detailed as possible with your prompt. But if you can't think of anything off the top of your head, you can click on the add keywords tab to find a range of architecture styles, materials, and more. At this stage, it's just as important to get out all the bad ideas as it is to find some really good inspiration. The great thing about using AI to assist in your idea generation is it allows you to fail faster. Because if you generate a bad idea in AI, at least it only took you a couple minutes and you didn't waste a lot of time. Compared to the much slower alternative of you doing a couple sketches, modeling the whole building, and then realizing this doesn't work at all, then you've lost 30 minutes to an hour and you feel defeated. Although we've got all the bad ideas out of our brain, we've also collected pages of inspiration for design. So how do we proceed forward with this? Well, I think it's a good idea to take a step back from AI and begin to sketch ideas based on the initial text to image studies. Again, at this point, you don't have to be 100% confident in one direction and it's definitely okay to have several quick sketch iterations but we do want to slowly narrow down the vision for our design as the process moves along now that we have those sketches let's move on to step number two sketch to render i see this feature as a way to visualize my sketches in a 3d environment with materials and context once you have imported your sketch you can start bringing your ideas to life by being more specific with the material selection like i want a light brick on the left side maybe a brick blend between light and dark on the right side with blue metal panels framing the double height atrium space. It might not be perfect, but the goal is to just start getting ideas and get the creativity flowing. Taking what you think is potentially something that you could build off of and just testing it out repetitively because you might not like how that brick color looks with the metal panel. So you can just go ahead and change that up in the prompt for the next iteration. Maybe doing a little bit more of a reddish brick. And I just wanna stress to you how much time this would have taken to get to this level of detail without AI. We are maybe 30 minutes in and are already getting into the detail of the massing and the materiality. But let me focus back on our sketch to render. I'm continuing to generate results which all of them are not perfect. In fact, I wasn't liking how some of these were turning out with the sketch I drew, so I cleaned it up a bit and brought it back in with more successful results. This stage of using the sketch to render tool has really helped me gauge to see if an idea or a concept is worth pursuing further. I'm continuing to build off each and every image, but I could bore you and go on forever generating all these iterations. So I'll settle with this design. Unfortunately, I don't have a solution for AI to 3D model because at this moment, it does a terrible job at it. But I'll go ahead and 3D model this myself and I'll be back for step number three. Using a 3D model to render is probably the most impactful because you can really get a sense for how the project is going to look in real life. There are two ways I find this tool the most useful. Number one, using your 3D model as a starting point with a low image strength and a high creativity to allow AI to have some more flexibility in the prompt and manipulation of the massing. This will be best for the early stages of the design process when you're still trying to figure out the form and the style of the building. But the second option is using your 3D model more as a base for the final rendering. Here you will have more of a high image strength to maintain that form of the 3D model 
and a medium to low creativity setting. This allows the building to stay the same shape while allowing to add materials and details via the prompt. And for the sake of time, I will move forward with the second option. So let's say you continue to like the colors and the materials that we've been using. We can continue that in our text prompt, but we can also use a reference image. So what I like to do is go to like brick manufacturers, metal panel manufacturers, and find colors and materials that I like and use that as my reference image. So then when I'm typing in the prompt for like a brick, or a metal, it'll take that information from the reference and apply it. And I find this to be the most intuitive way to use the 3D model to render and the reference image. And what allows us to express our creativity the most is using prompts. Maybe we add like a specific architect, an architecture style, a little more detail, because the more detail and the more specific you start to get within the prompts, the easier it is to have more of an accurate representation. And as you can see here, I start to become more detailed with these prompts, the accuracy of my model, even the realism of the image starts to come through. Now here are the results of a simple prompt versus a more specific prompt. And you can see the change in the detail of the elements as well as the quality of the final image. And because of that, we are starting to see the whole thing come together, which is great. Now I'll create a couple more images and then let's get to a stopping point. I didn't think I could get fully creative with the spectrum of color in the brick and the metal panels were kind of lacking. I blame AI for not listening to me and not being able to read my mind, but there's still hope we can fix that with these bonus features. Starting with select and modify, which might be one of the most impactful tools Render offers. All I have to do is select an area within the image either with the paintbrush or the polygon tool, and we're only gonna select that central atrium space. We wanna keep the glass, so we're gonna draw around it, but let's see what the orange looks like. We'll just test it out, maybe some different colors, different patterns, things like that. It's just quick. And just imagine doing this the way you've done it in the past and then doing it this way with AI. Tell me it's not saving you a ton of time. But as you can see, these are results of different brick colors and different metal panel colors using the select and modify tool. Now, sometimes AI is missing a few things because it's not perfect, thankfully. So I use the insert and modify tool, especially for people in trees. Now you can import a PNG version of a tree or a person or you can just upload an image and then select the remove background feature so that you don't have to go into Photoshop and manually do that yourself. And just like that, once you render it, it's turned this vector image of that person or a tree into a realistic element. Now, another way you can go about using this is using the sketch in context, which can be used for preliminary sketches within the site context or adding detail to the existing image. So you can draw people, draw trees, and then render it. But I think what this tool is the best for, let's say you go into Google Earth and you want to explore the street view. You can take a screenshot of that. And what you're gonna do is bring that in to the sketching context. And then you can draw in the building or the new design that you want. And it'll generate various options, just like we have done in the past. Nothing too crazy, but I think it's a super realistic tool that you can use when you're looking at a site or trying to figure out feasibility study for what you're working on. And now I wanna to start to finalize the image. So I'll bring it in to the magic variation tool. And so what this allows you to do is bring in reference images to adjust and tailor that image to a new style. And so this is basically just maybe like applying a filter uh, or something to that extent, but it's just a good additional step at the end if there's more of a unique style that you wanna tie in. And then once we've done this, obviously we wanna have it at the maximum quality. So I'll do the 4K image upscale, and this is the result. And these are just some of the features I've used day to day as an architecture student and in the design field now. I'm not saying these ideas are always gonna be perfect and it's gonna fit every need in your design process, but I certainly hope that you try it out and kind of see how it can fit into your workflow. Because I think there's gonna be things that come up and you're not gonna to wanna to spend hours coming up with a concept. So you're gonna use AI to kind of get your ideas out quicker to test to see what works and what doesn't. And I can definitely do a tutorial video on Rendare or some of the other AI tools if you want me to go more in depth. 